all, all of the organizations you create offer entrepreneurship aspect. Okay, and value. Uh, the other thing is they create the jobs for the persons, the first things. Uh... Mm -hmm. And also they create value because if you imagine an enterprise, any enterprise, what do you have? You have inputs, processing, outputs. So, for example, an enterprise that makes chairs has as input wood, logs, mm -hmm. nothing. That's substantial. Through processing, you have chairs, chairs that can be used. Mm -hmm. And this is a product, but we can do the same with services. What you have, you have an idea. You have as input people, they do training, they, and they have good students, they create good entrepreneurs, they create good, I don't know, technical skill people. So everything creates value. And an organization can create value. That's why we need an organization. That's why we need to promote the entrepreneurship. So I have to, yeah, okay. Okay. So uh, we said that the entrepreneurship is a key competence for lifelong learning, according to the European Council. And I want to, you to take uh, attention to the, the description because it says entrepreneurship is capacity to act upon opportunities and ideas and to transform them into values for others. It is founded upon creativity, critical thinking and problem solving, taking initiative and perseverance and the ability to work collaboratively in order to plan and manage projects that are of cultural, social and financial value. It's everything together. So let's move on. And in order to, uh, to make it more clear, they have uh, created the Entrecom framework. Do you, do you know that? Are you familiar with that? It's actually recording when we're still sharing. Mm -hmm. The Entrecom uh, Entre framework is this. It's a list of 15 skills that they all together consist of entrepreneurship. They have three major uh, competence areas, ideas and opportunities, resources, and uh, inform uh, into action. Uh, entrepreneurship is considered a transversal competence. What? Did someone say anything? I, I, think, I think I did. Okay, so it's a transversal competence. It goes horizontally to among all uh, tasks. Beneficial to individuals, as we said, organization and society. It fosters personal development, encourages active citizenship, promotes employment and social inclusion. In this circle, the Entrecom framework, you see that most of the skills are soft skills, what we call soft skills, like uh, initiative, creativity, vision. So entrepreneurship is an umbrella. Underneath, there are many skills, and we can attack each skill in order, in order to improve it, if we want to improve entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurial competencies, are they only entrepreneurial competencies or are non-cognitive competencies also? If you see the previous slide, what I mean? Can you see? Ah, you can. Okay. So... Um, for example, working with others, what type of skill is it? Is it a technical skill or a soft skill? Soft skill. Planning and management, soft skill or technical skill? Especially technical. Technical. Taking the initiative, be, be, uh, have initiative, soft skill. So it's a mixture of technical and uh, soft skills. And for example, to create a business plan, it's technical, but innovativeness, it's soft skill. Perseverance, soft skill. Goal setting, it can be technical. Yeah. I can only see when we start speaking. Okay, nothing is pure in uh, social science anyway. So we teach education, we have entrepreneurship education. Uh, there are three ways we can teach entrepreneurship education. Educating about, which means we provide the information on education, what is education, what is, sorry, entrepreneurship, all the topics of entrepreneurship. 
we can teach for entrepreneurship, meaning we can go to people who aspire to become entrepreneurs and teach them how to do it. And we can teach through entrepreneurship, meaning we can take all those soft skills that we saw before and many more and try to instill them to people in order not only to start their own business, but because it is good for their life, it is good for, it helps them improve, helps them become more mature and helps them to pursue their own goals, personal goals. Okay, if we go for entrepreneurship, meaning that we teach people uh, to start their own business, here we have uh, entrepreneurs of different stages. We have potential entrepreneurs aspiring, we have nascent entrepreneurs and we have dynamic entrepreneurs. Potential just aspiring entrepreneurs, so what they want more that's why we classify them to see their needs, as we said also yesterday. And they need probably an awareness education to, to teach and learn what is entrepreneurship. If you are a nation entrepreneur, what you need more is startup education, how to build your own startup. And if you are a dynamic entrepreneur, you have your own company, what you need probably is to continue the education in order to improve your company. And of course, all of them need to be taught entrepreneurial dynamism. What makes an entrepreneurial an entrepreneur successful? The link where I got this is in the, on the side. So there are many approaches, as we said, to teach entrepreneurship. The major thing here is uh, that I want you to remember is that through entrepreneurship, we, we, saw, uh, we said that it's also a traversal skill. Uh, entrepreneurship teach you to be to use a systemic approach in everything. Systemic approach is uh, when you realize that everything is connected and you are influenced and you are influenced the others. So this systemic approach is only for the benefit. Mm -hmm. It's a part of also that is a buzzword today: e emotional uh, intelligence. Still, you know what is around you. You have a, a feeling. You have uh, awareness of what is around and you connect things in a systemic way. And this is good for the companies and good for ourselves. And for teachers is a value because it facilitates you the learning. What is uh, what an environment, a situational environment uh, includes for a teacher? What the environment of a teacher includes? A trainer, what the, his environment includes? When you say includes, well, a teacher teaches, but he's not alone. He's not alone in his class, so he has to take into consideration diff different factors from the environment, the direct, the indirect. So, what's in the direct environment of a teacher that he should take into consideration when he's teaching? First of all, like a notion to dialogue, to move, transfer information, get information. You got the information again. You, you adapt your new information, transfer it again. So feedback from, from feedback, feedback from your target only group. By feedback. Okay. Only you, by feedback. Okay. Eh? Technology. Technology. Surroundings. Physical, physical surroundings. Physical surroundings. Yeah. How many people are, are being taught as well? And um, is there something no. I can? Yeah. Okay. By the yeah, guitar. Yeah. By the guitar. Okay. Yes. Okay. On the board, behind the board, on 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 the he should consider his own limitations and strengths, his skills, and his students. Then where he teaches, in a, uni in a university, in a vet uh, club, whatever. But what he's teaching with, and um, like this face to face or through computer. And then what else? His, uh, the science he's teaching. What happens to the science he's teaching? The improvements. And then the environment. Uh, is the environment conductive to what he's teaching? Are there other 
institutions like uh, politics, uh, politics, uh, economy that affects his science, which in fact in fact affects affects the teaching and all that. So you need to think in circles, take into consideration everything. That's the systemic approach. You need to, to think into the system, mm. the system. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. Now That's comparing, the, let's compare the entrepreneurial entrepreneurship education with other types of education like problem-based learning and project-based learning. You see that in most, in all these aspects, entrepreneurial education is uh, considered uh, better for problems, for opportunities, because it focuses on this, uh, on artifact creation, real world interaction, value creation, teamwork, innovativeness, risk of failure. We'll discuss about it later. While problem-based learning focuses mostly on problems and on teamwork, and project-based learning focuses more on problems, teamwork, and also on the artif artifact creation. So it's more comprehensive, it's more holistic, entrepreneurship education can be. Can I ask? Yes. If you go back. Mm -hmm. Why is it the entrepreneurial education and the other are learning? How do we compare those? Uh, by because it's two different uh, aspects in. Yes, it's just uh, approaches to learning. Yeah, but it, it's like uh, comparing apples and pears. No. Well, if you see the result, if you see that you want to have what you include in the education, then it's not. You see the, the methodology. Yeah, but what I mean is that uh, problem based learning and project based learning could be part of the entrepreneurial education. Yes, okay, it can be. It I think mean, it's more. Like, yeah, yeah, it can totally be. Yeah, it's the yeah. basis. You yes. should start yes. by problem but analysis, you should start. Yeah. And but by project, by project, by yeah. project, mm -hmm. you can develop yourself finally entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurial could be the result of both. Yeah, or could be one uh, consistent part. It depends how you look at it. Yeah. Okay. But it, it was more to say that uh, this easily exclude the learning. Problem based no. learning, project based learning. No, because you have problems, you have all that is the, the, this, uh, what co is contained in project based learning, it's also contained here. Yeah, it's but, more. Yeah, but uh, don't go ahead. We can discuss later. Yeah, it's more discuss it. real world interactions would be also part of the problem based learning. Uh, it's, well, yeah, it's I just agree. because it's my profession yes. normally. So yeah. that's. Probably it's a, it's a matter of perspective because I got this also from uh, uh, studies. It's yeah, not no, my. <laughs> I recognize yeah. it. That's okay. why. We'll discuss that. So, why entrepreneurial education is relevant and important? We, me, we mentioned some uh, causes before, but for common reasons for job creation, for economic success, because of globalization, innovation, and renewal, we need to have entrepreneurs in order to speed things up. People need entrepreneurial skills and abilities to thrive in an ever-changing world, in individual level. And uh, an uncertain and changing market requires people with higher level general skills, which entrepreneurial education provides. But most promising reasons for entrepreneurship is that it also provides joy, engagement, and creativity. It's not only work, you can, you fulfill, you might be fulfilled through entrepreneurship. It creates, it's create, it creates values. Creativity is a main source of joy and pride for people. That's how it's connected. And also countries, the wealth of countries correlates with human happiness. So it's, it's connected. And of course, societal changes. People can make a difference to society. Marginalized people can achieve economic success through entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship addresses problems in society that the market economy has failed to address because social economy is also into entrepreneurship, a part of entrepreneurship. Now, um, here, what I want you to keep from here is that um, to develop entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial competencies, you need to focus on the development specifics of the target group, and also that students need specific guidance and support. You said it before in the beginning uh, that in order uh, the entrepreneur should be taught some things. 
but specifically, there are specific needs that need, uh, that need to be guided and supported. And there is a reason for that, because sometimes we believe that skills are built automatically. If you are pushed in a situation, then you build the skills to, to survive the situation. It's not exactly true. It's like you may have an yeah. uh, international term. It's like, it, it's like you need, you need. I'm not. <laughs> This gentleman is also native and very well educated. The difference between us is that related to music, he can be a real professional, a real entrepreneur. I could come and support him with ideas, blah, 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 blah. But the professional will come to me and say, Daddy, this should be in this key, in this example. Ah, so could be a native entrepreneur, but there is real need for education, yes. vocational, professional education. In this respect, both examples are here. Okay, good. And this is because entrepreneurship, as we said, is an umbrella. It has an ad other skills beneath it. What we usually identify as entrepreneurship is acting upon opportunities and ideas. But this, be behind it has opportunity discovery and exploitation, understanding environment, the systemic approach and financial literacy. Uh, this is affected, yes? Uh, just a comment. In log frame analysis, based on projects I've mentioned, these are in the last column, opportunity to be exploited, understanding the environment in order to support you in entrepreneurship and business, and financial support, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Also your knowledge and also financial support. These to are yeah. exactly. Okay, so, but this, is also connected with creative thinking. And creative thinking breaks into planning, problem solving, creativity, ethics, and sustainability. And this, again, is connected, I'll tell you just this part, with self-management. In self-management, again, we have different bricks. Metacognition, growth mindset, autonomous motivation, coping with emotions. Just take one of it, go back. To identify an opportunity, you need to explore, explore the environment. How do you explore the environment with the capacities you have? How do we usually explore, ex explore our environment? Each of us has in its mind a, a mental model. When we go out to do anything, we have a mental model that includes what to look for and how to react. So when you go to explore the environment, you use the mental model you have based on successful stories, of your past, of your experience, and you look, you search and you look to those things of the environment that you are used to. According, you, according to your meaning. Uh, yes, according to, you, and according to your experience, exactly. because you everybody know. learns through trial and error. So we say as a business, and I've seen that in many businesses, you believe it's only a, a, a individual problem, but business do the same. When they go out to explore the environment, they have kind of like a checklist. Okay, I'm saying simplistically, but kind of like a checklist. And they start doing this, this, this. Oh, okay, I have these factors. So what I'm going to do is this. And that's how we manage to produce a decision support system based on uh, statistics using what ifs. We provided many years ago, we provided the preneurs with problems. What if? And they start giving us what if this situation is like this? I do this, and we manage to do product solutions and do the and feed the product the decision system. Anyway, the problem is here that our past knowledge affects the way we identify our environment, and this is an evolutionary trait. We do it often, and it's good because we don't have all the time of the world to uh, identify and search our environment completely, and we don't have all the information we need, even if I know that I want this information, I might never find this information. So it's an evolutionary trait to use not all the time of the world and not all the information of the world and speed up the decisions, but it can lead to uh, failures. Uh, there are um, many stories uh, on the internet about companies who fail to to decipher the environment. And that's why we say in business administration that success usually leads to failure because you feel confident that I know what to look for. I'm looking for this, but times the, the 
times are changing. You cannot use old models to decipher a new situation. And we've we'll seen many, we've seen many uh, companies fail because of that. The so, reality surprises you. Yeah. So what? It's a, a trade. We do that. It's an evolutionary trade. It's good. But when we do it, we just need to be aware that what I'm doing now is something that I've done in the past and leave a door open for new things to come in. That's what I wanted to tell you here. Only that. So let's move on. Uh, what a trainer can do. A trainer uses, a trainer is here. So he uses the prior experience. He uses a interest, motivation, new information, and then process it and comes with a reframing of a conceptual system. The new information comes in and change the mental model and then opportunities to use uh, implementing novel and different situations. The trainer in a way, the teacher is in this uh, loop and tries to mediate previous and reshape knowledge to adapt to the new situations. It's a new way to see the teacher when the environment is changing. So action-based and non-action-based entrepreneurial education. Non-action-based is the traditional one, lectures, guest lectures, group discussions, study visits, literature studies, standardized tests. This increases learners, learners engagement and motivation. It's good. But if you use action-based, dry business plan writing, interviews, opportunity mapping, project case basis, role play, business model generation, pitching, real life business plan, this is better, but it increases teaching complexity. I'll show you a slide saying which of these are more, affect more the, uh, the way students retain information. You see, lecture and reading, audiovisual, demonstration. And then we have, we starting to increase discussion, practice and teaching others. Here is also a peer mentoring that we have many times. So you see the better uh, methods to, to make uh, students retain information are those who are more uh, difficult to develop. Okay, oh, no. There are some uh, approaches to learning that are used uh, by countries, by teachers. The most common is uh, the entrepreneurship as everyday practice. What we do here is usually, I have the resource, learners construct entrepreneurial stories anchored in their own life world, so to be engaged, to help them develop their opportunity skills. Then learners reflect <laughs> upon problems and disharmonies in their own life world to help them develop everyday value creation skills or learners can imagine themselves as entrepreneurial individuals in a distant future to help them transform into a more entrepreneurial identity. And finally, learners working in, in the disciplinary teams, picturing and then realizing entrepreneurial opportunities to help them develop work forms for team efficacy. In a way, we push those people into a sea of entrepreneur, of entrepreneurship, and we will teach them in a way to swim, but based on these things. Another approach is based on uh, outcomes. So what we have here, most or less the same, more or less the same, but we pay more attention to the outcomes. So we have, you cannot see it, but you will, uh, I will send it to you. You have, um, you split each uh, major theme like develop the entrepreneurial behavior, skills and attitudes into questions. I understand. Do you understand? Does the student understand all entrepreneurial behavior development in the context of self employment? Uh, does opportunity seeking uh, is familiar for him? And at the, so this is based more on uh, upon, uh, on outcomes, intellect in uh, uh, learning outcomes. The new here is also the networking capability. Uh, you have to realize also that each theory is based on the previous ones and add a little stone, a very little stone. And in this one, except the emphasis on the learning outcomes is the networking. And we have also 
a DALIS uh, model to honor our uh, coordinators. So from the DALIS Foundation of Entrepreneurship here, in order to teach entrepreneurship, we have a, a different model. Students need to get, need to get con uh, concrete experiences with being creative and with acting in the outside world. Students should develop high self-esteem and build up a number of success stories. And students get involved in processes based on their own interests and ideas, as well as on the mix of their own and their educators' approach. And what we have here, we have this, they do it, and then they do it again, and then they do it again. So they build uh, experience. They try to instill and improve their skills by make it, ma making it many times. I have to say something, and yes. please accept my interest. Mm -hmm. Please accept. We are coming from a larger people, larger number of population. Here there are not more than five million, a bit more. Danish Foundation of Entrepreneurship. Please allow me to say. I have the feeling that with the population like Romanian one, 20 million, I would appreciate very much. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to criticize my people. Uh, but I'm surprised about capacity to produce such a really substance, a substance text and knowledge towards entrepreneurship in a population so small. Probably the weather is building with that. Probably the, the, the nature conditions are the ones making people, a few of them, be very creative and especially more efficient, effectiveness in their job. By their job. It, it was just a comment. It's exactly what I feel now about emotions and talking about emotions. Exactly what I feel. Now, there is also, you want to say something? Oh, no. There is also the Entrecom uh, progression model. Here we have um, stages, different stages of uh, maturity in a way. So it's foundation, intermediate, advanced, and expert based on whether a student can produce something, relying on the support from others, building independently, taking responsibility, and finally, driving transformation, innovation, and growth on his own. We will focus more on these two, the first two, because probably our students will be in this uh, area. And I would like you to pay more attention to the verbs they are used. Discover, explore, experiment there. So to discover, uh, in level one, focuses mainly in discovering your qualities, potential interests and wishes. It also focuses on recognizing different types of problems and needs that can be solved creatively and on developing individual skills and attitudes. The first step, the first, the lower uh, stage. Then it's explore, focuses on exploring different approaches to problems. This one is, a, is focusing more on recognizing problems. This is exploring different approaches to attack problems, concentrating diversity and developing social skills and attitudes. Then we have experimentation, focusing on critical thinking and experimenting with, with creating value, for instance, through practical entrepreneurial experiences. And then there, focuses on turning ideas into action in the real uh, life. Now, the most important thing here is to support, if you can, idea generation, because idea generation is the heart of entrepreneurship. When we have an idea, the, the, do all ideas come into reality, come, become a product or a service? What's the percentage, do you think? Zero point zero one <laughs> eight nine. Close, close. Seven or eight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, idea generation. Uh, although it is the heart of entrepreneurship, um, it's not synonymous to product generation because what you might think that is important or usable, the target group doesn't pay attention at all. Could be rejected by the beneficiary. Yeah, completely, exactly. completely. Exactly. So, how can we yeah. you how can we produce better ideas? In entrepreneurship. We want our learners 
to develop ideas that are more feasible, impactful, and creative, because usually learners' ideas tend to be a repetition of low impact or infeasible mediocrity. The best, now, the best business ideas come from problems. That's this approach. Why? Because as one of the entrepreneurs said in uh, an American entrepreneur, customers do not buy products, they buy solutions to problems. And during this crisis, people's problems have changed dramatically. So you need to see which are the problems people face. Again, uh, systemic analysis. So use problems as inspiration to generate creative, impactful, and feasible solutions to those problems. How can we do that? How can we support our students to generate good ideas? Because it is true, uh, teaching uh, students in a university, mm, out of 250 students, we had a, a hackathon, five were so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, one managed to go through initial stages because of low quality. And although these were as uh, university students in Piraeus on uh, entrepreneurship, on uh, business administration. So how can we produce better ideas? How can one teach students to, to be more creative? Uh, we can teach them to be more creative. But first of all, we have to motivate them. Mm. As long as you succeed to motivate them by a song, mm. you'll be able to involve them. You, by involving them, be engaged. Being engaged in uh, case studies, in learning by doing, in practical creation of the song, they will become creative more and more. In fact, you suggest to them that being active, they could become creative ones. On this way, you can modulate, you just take, you, you, create, you create a portfolio of ideas. You take them and based on techniques on your capacity in entrepreneurship, supposing that you are a real entrepreneur with capacity and skills, with knowledge and skills, with capacity, you can modulate the ideas in order to, to produce those products to respond to the market needs. Market. When you have done this, you can say that your product will be bought by the market, by the beneficiaries, in order to respond to their needs. That's, that's the change. Yeah. It could be one. You'll no, see it in the next, uh, what yeah. you said, you'll see it in the next uh, slide. Yeah. Yeah. You can read well, you can you read it? Because <laughs> nobody else sees it. <laughs> No, he said to teach them to validate the problem and the solution. Okay. And how do we generate a problem? The, uh, let him keep this idea because we need it. Now, one way, it's, a, it's an exercise that you can do. Um, first of all, you can teach them. I think you said it, uh, Gabby, that you, they need first to be exposed. So they need to learn why great business ideas come from problems. They need to know that. They then, have to understand exactly how to identify problems. What's a problem? Because you, if you don't have a definition of a problem in sense of meaning, mm -hmm. the real meaning, you are not able to identify the problem. Could be. Yeah, can I say it's very interesting to this point because the entrepreneurs you mentioned when we started, they all refuse to. They didn't learn like that. They jump into so all our items didn't go through this process. From they focus on problems, right? So learners then brainstorm on solving problems for which they are passionate about. Hypothesize and prioritize those problems, and these problems support learners discover and or solution ideas and processes, resulting in more meaningful and more feasible business ideas. We don't have time to have an exercise. When do we have to have a break? We can have a break and then you continue. Okay, no, I will finish this and just before the business canvas, we'll have a break. Okay? Uh, just a moment, Marie. Yes. That's why I insisted yesterday with problems. Usually, we don't consider them in a problem. It's so important in order to have relevant projects to really identify identify as as much as possible all of them to identify the problems it is a need if you want relevant projects 
to respond for sure to the beneficiary's needs. If not, your project will be not relevant. So one exercise that we're not going to do it here is this one. Okay, I'll, I'll say it. Invite your students to write down three custom segments they are members of. I belong to the ecological club of my community. I am in the yoga class. Three segments they are members of. Identify this. Then you invite them to write three passion segments, what they would like to be part of. For example, I would like to be part of a I don't know, kite making group. I'm not, but I would like to. These are also, they should identify this. And then they should pick only three, but these three make sure that the passion segments and the other ones are not the same. They can be an overlapping here, but not all three are also the passion segments. They should also have something to dream on. Uh, a passion segment. And excuse me, I understand. Excuse me. Why there is a need to identify the passion of each of us? Why such a need? Because of the motivation, as you said before. Uh, yes. Okay. In order to, to, to better motivate them after, because you go into their passion. And they know it. When they are passionate about something, they know it. They know their problems better. So they can produce better solutions, we hope. Because you increase trust yourself if you act like that. Okay. And you make them be much more. Okay. So then uh, they pick three and invite students to hypothesize three problems, member of which those of, on each segment of this, they should hypothesize three problems. So nine, nine all of, nine all of them. Mm -hmm. Then they should uh, prioritize them. And what is expected is that ideas to be through this uh, process to be more feasible because they are focusing on, on the certain people they care about exactly. or themselves, more impactful because they are paying more attention to problems and more creative because they will get to use those problems as inspirations, as opposed to relying on a light bulb moment. Uh, in these approaches, they don't believe in this, like I had an idea. They believe more in problems. Okay, so, so this is um, an exercise you can use, but so uh, just a bit more. Invite students to hypothesize. What can we do after that? So they have hypothesize and they come up with nine problems. What can we do after that? Just to make it more interesting, what can we do? We have nine problems. We should decide somehow it's not enough time to prioritize them. Of course. In order to, to work with them, in mm -hmm. order to give the right objectives. Okay, right yes. and, and then what? And develop, you said it before. Somebody said yeah, it before. And, to de, and to develop based on objectives, to develop a kind of action plan with that team, in order to produce the right results, in order to answer the beneficiaries. But let's make it more. Um, interesting they have nine problems what do we do with them say that we had we play this game here and we have nine problems of each and you prioritize them and you speak about the three first okay still we still have uh, i don't know 30 problems how do we select what can we, we say after the next will be solved by itself mm -hmm. which problems won't be solved no matter what we do and we concentrate on the ones that could be solved so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, do we, but do we agree that any problem has a solution or has plan? No, not the only problem has a solution. No, no, no for sure. For sure, definitely. <laughs> some problems See, cannot be solved. Unlike you, Ed, and he's an entrepreneur. So yeah, but, no, but some problems are really unsolved. It depends of time, it depends of resources. So the answer is it can't be. Okay. No, but, but you don't have time. You don't have time. It or depends on the dimension of the problem. Well, if someone is hit by, the, by a train, you there is no the solution, solution for this. You put the problems into two categories to be solved. Never. Yeah, that's what I said. You know. Yeah, it's like that. Some problems that cannot be solved. Yeah. Some problems that can be solved and will be solved by itself. You know, some problems just get solved by time. What about time to solve the problem? What? What yes. about this answer? 
time will solve the problem. Yes, some problems will be solved, you know, when you have no, some, we are not some skin the problem, problem, you know, it will be solved <laughs> in a day or two. So you don't have to go to, to pharmacy that is uh, three towns uh, far, you know, it, it will be solved, you know. Why, why concentrate on this problem, you know? When there is it a problem, how hard and is the, the other problem is, you know, some pain person pain has pain. some, what? How much pain do you get because of? Okay, but as a methodology, it's, okay. it's, 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 it's a big, it's a big discussion. It's not only good idea. But it depends on the own capacity to measure the dimension of the problem and your attitude related to the problem. Okay, this is not a problem for me. I'm not this the one who invented the Yeah. You know, so okay, so it. what do you do? But what we, do you do as you said? Both? Yeah. You need something to validate them. If they are feasible or not. So you need something to validate. Yeah. This is correct and you have mentioned also before. One way could be to have pitching. Have the students pitch their first idea or the idea they are more uh, you know, close to their hearts. That could be create some deep building and all that. Um, other is to maybe make a forum, since we're talking about digital, and start put their ideas there, do a gallop, which ones to follow, which ones to we can continue, we can uh, develop, and things like that. So you can be creative about that. Actually, this is what I, I want to like, would like to stop here, have a break, and then we come back with a canvas, business canvas, a creative thing. Okay? Thank you. 10 minutes. Yeah, what, what time do we have to? Yes, what time do we have to leave from here or finish? Okay, yeah. 10 minutes will be hard. Yeah. 10 minutes break. <laughs> Sound on? Yeah, these are the platform on the share files. In the, in the Moodle? Uh, no, Moodle in the platform. Share files. Sound on for the meeting? Where is it? Yeah. There's someone who's sound on here. Ah. Yeah. No, mine is closed. Is it okay now? Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> We have a 10 minute break.
Escilla, con le due cose, che sta uccidendo la vita. Yep. Sì. Sì. Some of the stars and uh, when we do something together, everybody will be here. Okay. <laughs> So, you've seen that before. It's uh, the way to teach uh, a deprivation through interactive digital workshops, video overviews, webinars, case studies, and uh, to provide stimulus environment and a rich rep repertoire of possible actions of learners. And because the entrepreneurship has a lot of soft skills, we can use role models for entrepreneurial uh, attributes. For example, to introduce growth mindset, normalize failure, and deny to give up persistence. Or to emphasize the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones that learn from failures. This, remember the risk of failure that we said in the beginning, uh, the persistence and normalizing failure is very important when you're an entrepreneur. A possible example is, could be this. Ah, you cannot see all. Okay, so you can use things like that to inspire people. As Jordan said, he has missed more than 9,000 shots, almost 300 games he has lost, 26 times he failed to take the winning uh, shot. However, all this um, uh, made him a very successful uh, person because he tried, he never gave up. So, okay. Go on. Design thinking. We have the business idea, how to generate an idea, some uh, exercises. Uh, however, one way is to, to go out and see problems and try to, to brainstorm and generate ideas. Another way is to design thinking. The father of design thinking is David Kelly. In, his, in an interview, I have the link if you want to see it in the YouTube. David Kelly said it might help to pose two caricatures. Two hypothetical extremes. Please, the engineers do not uh, <laughs> be insulted. One is engineering as problem solving, the other is design as creating. The designer has a dream that goes beyond what exists rather than fixing what exists. Engineers usually fix. Well, uh, a designer can think, and then, of course, with the help of an engineer, can go on. The designer wants to create a solution that fits in a deeper situational or social uh, sense. And design is messy. Engineering is not messy. It follows certain rules. So the designer can handle the messiness and ambiguity and is willing to trust I, intuition. I, I, I totally, I'm totally <laughs> contradiction. Really? 50, because you're an engineer. 50, I am mm -hmm. an engineer in the beginning, 15 years in the research center. Uh, we every time we, we every time produce new and new and new nothing from the beginning, no frames. Because it was that was the place to research and produce new equipment, new electrical equipment. So, in this respect, in my opinion, an engineer has to be a designer. So use the design problem, thinking. The use problem, design thinking. You know, no. you are, pardon? But you uh, you ever produced a locomotive which has never been. So, a locomotive is a, is a real act produced. Uh, product. A new locomotive made, made by, by support. Uh, okay, no problem. This is different way of reacting. When you produce something new, not this. Something also which writes, which writes, can write, but is totally unseen. As she said, engineer is not the one who is designing. He is designing. Oh, no, I mean, architect. Is some no, we don't, we don't get it. Yeah. No, no, he is not. He is right. a designer. No. Yes, he is the designer. But I am the designer because no, I you just no. you just follow the the. I the, 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 the 
<laughs> we are in a huge country. You talk about that. You have to be into a research center <laughs> if you are not a designer. To design electrical drives means to design something totally new, never been seen before. It means creativity, it means innovation, it means designing. To design a new shape of the car, you are the designer, not only an engineer. Of course, you could, you could be good in mechanics, in electronics, in electricity, and so on, in pneumatic, but you have to design. If you don't, a doctor, a doctor is an engineer, is a designer, because if I have something here and he broke my my bottom and he has to cut something and do it to arrange he's a designer to design means new ways new roads this is the real no, if you if you then can't... everyone is designer and design does not exist no, no, because no. everyone is no, no. we are discussing everyone is a black and white no we are discussing here about colors about different... well, this is okay just to emphasize the dish the process design, in order to do that also design. management is also design it's, uh, in this means but in uh, the, the meaning of design it's not everybody design is equivalent to project in this way okay but uh, in, that way. in that way okay when, 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 but uh, you, need, you need you need creativity uh, an engineer is not the one repairing as the plumber a plumber is not a designer could be also a designer but in short terms but a research engineer has to be it's a must if so not it's not the place it's a different we speciality maybe yeah. pardon we don't talk about research engineer we talk about engineer civil engineer about uh, an architect Design okay. okay, but see, even an engineer can use design thinking in if he wants to create a new product because this Correct. is an approach. Pretty this good. is an approach. Okay. In order to create, you have to be a designer. Okay. That's the, the formulation. So design yeah. thinking Sorry. and approach Sorry. helps Sorry. you to to create products that are more desirable, feasible, and viable because this is the problem, as we said also. Uh, when we generate ideas, um, there are different uh, abilities in design. For a designer to use design thinking approach, he has to navigate ambiguity, learn from others, synthesize information, experience rapidly, um, move between concrete and abstract, build and craft intentionally, communicate deliberately, and design their own design work. But and their faces, the most common faces design thinking is to emphasize, to define, to ideate, to prototype and test. These are faces. Uh, they are not in a linear order. They can change and they can be even uh, there is feedback in each from each face to every other face. So uh, the most important thing is to understand the problem, because as we said, we design for problems, not for uh, uh, the problem. When we design for problems, we come up with better solutions. We observe others. We emphasize with others. We, we went into the world of the, of the user in order to give him solutions that fits his own needs. We interpret the results, generate ideas, then prototype, experiment, test, implement, and improve. It's a um, it's a circle. It's a it requires repetition of uh, these uh, stages. And uh, and one important thing is that you need to, it's to share the story. Sometimes we design in silos. We have uh, we make a design from, with our own department. We don't discuss with other departments. And although we come with a good design, it's not feasible to be made. So. A thing to do, and uh, it's very important to share the story with clients, with uh, customers. Actually, sometimes customers and competitors are our main horses of idea. Now, uh, in a way to to promote design thinking, it's a famous uh, exercise, the wallet exercise. You can use it with uh, the students. We don't have time to do that now because we will uh, do the business canvas. I think it's more uh, interesting. What you do here is you, 
you divide, you ask, okay. I'll go to this quickly. No. Uh, what you do is you ask each of the participants to design his or her ideal wallet, a wallet. Three minutes because you have to to press, uh, you know, the times uh, important, and then you ask each one to discuss with his next uh, people next to him his ideal wallet. What is the next one's ideal wallet? And also interview each one the other, and then compare the designs to see. Mm -hmm. In this way, you see the needs of the other things that you have not seen, so you, you tend uh, to empathize with the others. And this is very good because you create your in the emotional intelligence, which is very uh, helpful, not only in business, but also in the career. You understand each other better when you do that. I'll send you, I will put actually in file sharing uh, the description of this game. Now, business plan. We have about half an hour and um, uh, you know, you are all familiar with business plan, aren't you? Okay, so you know what constitutes business plan, <coughs> the, the, name, the nine main uh, areas. The most important is the value proposition, why we, we provide what we provide, why, which of our customers' problems are we helping to solve, it's our reason to start a, an enterprise, uh, which customers needs we are satisfying, what are the key features of our product that match prob uh, customers' problems and needs. And then it's key partners, key activities, key resources, customer relations channels, customer segments, the cost structure and revenue. In a way, these are the most important uh, aspects that needs to be taken into consideration when you come up with a new idea to make sure that it is feasible. Um, this is an example. Here is an example of Uber, and uh, you'll be asked to do a business canvas yourself. So the value proposition of Uber, you all know the value proposition is fast pickup time, lower price, especially with Uber pool, cashless payments, that was of course many years ago that when it was a competitive advantage, and rating system. And then the key partners are the drivers, the technology partners, investors and lobbyists, regulators and governments, insurances, financial partners. Key activities, key prices competitive, maintain a platform, expand to more cities and countries, collect and analyze data. Key resources, network effects between drivers and riders, gather data, engineers and other staff, application for drivers and riders because always it's updated. Then customer relations is self-service, personal with uh, drivers when needed. I mean, personal confrontation and monitoring. And channels, free media coverage, social media, app store, stores through high ratings, and word of mouth, which was very important for uh, Uber. And then customer segments, well, the, uh, the target groups that were attracted to that were unemployed drivers, drivers looking for part-time jobs, um, commuters, business travelers, people preferring mobile payments. So you see both drivers and customers in that. <coughs> Cost structure for advertisement, platform maintenance, uh, regulatory compliance, transaction fees, R&D, and revenue streams, percentage of the transaction fee. Uh, could we have uh, much more related to R&D? R&D, what kind of costs related to R&D? Research the worst developer with the Yes, worst. you need, probably they needed a, a department <clears throat> in order to make sure that the, what they produce, the application, the platforms and all that are up to date. So they needed an, a research and development department because they in used that to, in order to, to, to beneficiaries need. And, and be compatible with the technology what because they, this, yeah, Uber, we have it for what, 20, 30 years. No, 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 it came in probably last decade. Maybe. No, maybe more. No, not okay. Not in Croatia, a couple of years. <laughs> not more than 10 months. Yeah. Well, in Italy, I think it's yeah. the United States, and it's uh, no, not an hour in Europe. It's not an hour in Denmark. It's not an hour in Okay. Now, I will leave the previous oh, one. Uh, 
But you mean not more than four years ago? Not more. Not more than four years ago. And just a few of us used it. Of whom is a few of us? There are a lot of people. Yes, 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 there are a lot of So if you can think about three minutes, talk to each other and come up with one problem that we will all to be try. To by entrepreneurship. Yeah, and we will try to make a business canvas of it, but we will do it together using the mural. You have all the link in all your computers, mm -hmm. so we can uh, co-work together. Can we have a problem that we can solve? It can be an extreme problem, just to make fun of it and see the... Um, in real extent of this, an extreme problem, not design a chair, but something extreme that we can all work on. Okay, three minutes to discuss between us and then we can uh, select the most extreme one. It can be funny, it can be strange. Do you have a mobile? Is that your computer? Can you check it online? Because the notes are online. Can you check if the link is working? Should it be complicated? No, 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 no. But it should be funny, very, you know, extreme. How how to create a platform for online learning into entrepreneurship and other activities? So create an online platform. So well, our people problem. Will visit. Our problem. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can make it some more. Uh, okay. Simple. We we should sell it. We don't publish the link on the No, I send it by email. For the project, could be the best. We have the platform already destined to be entrepreneurship, meaning training courses for entrepreneurship developed by use of such platform. An e platform for e training courses. Okay, so Henry also suggested that we want to create an e platform for a. For trainers. For trainers. For trainers. To be used also later on national level mm -hmm. 
in terms of uh, training on entrepreneurship. Yes, a, a product. Yeah. We want to sell this product. To sell this product. So an online platform for training. Yeah. And, 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 and to equip with the necessary tools mm -hmm. in order to be used by final beneficiaries to become entrepreneurs. Okay. Yeah. So can you use the Google and uh, start with your ideas? I have sent a link to you. I'm, I'm waiting for the information. Okay. Either. Because it would be better to work on the computer and not on the piece of paper. Just So this is a B-class for you and platform. So this is a product, okay? The problem is generally talking about the humanitarian products, it can be like, it can be for all of us. No, just the idea. Yeah. If you ask about other things, Oh, those system resources may make your project quality. Try to Try to increase some 
Where is the press what did you come over here? Yeah. So it's going to be Yeah, it's Yes, and then you can share and speak your voice. And you have to sign in. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. sorry. The bottle then sits in Are you for it now? I don't know. I don't know. Create an account. You can use the link. 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 That is. Okay. So, and they can't actually see because we're sharing the presentation. So, um, oh, you can see that. Nope. That's why I said because you're sharing the screen. So we still can share the other presentation. So you can see. Uh, you you want to check the What? Yeah, thank you. So we can. Can you it? Well, what? Oh. Got it. And no, 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 you have to go into. No, you have to go in there. Oh, yeah. No, no, actually, you have to go in here. Also, share the project here to be able to do No, for project.
Kiri Sabja. You can do it, but don't ask me. What is, the, what is the platform called? You're doing it on? Okay. What is this platform called? Okay. Let's get some look what is being done. Okay. Can we have two? No, no, we don't need this. You're sharing, yeah. You're sharing the full space. So we put half of this here. Okay. Hopefully they will be. Yeah, I'm not sure this will work. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And where's the, the previous one? It should be uh, the visual then, the uh, slideshow. Oh, slideshow, then that's the one we needed before. Oh, yes. okay, exactly. So, again, you so we have to start. It. No, it's up now. Okay. And ah, we can yeah. now make it this side. Okay. I wish it had a mouse, but yeah. Yeah, team favorite is a team. Bravo. How did you do? You made it half screen? No, you just minimize it and then you cast on the side that you want. Just use the. So it can... Should I have started a slideshow instead? Yeah, but it's how to get it on. Just share screen. No. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, no. And then maybe we can uh, zoom it in a little, or maybe slideshow would be. Ah, slideshow. slideshow would be cool. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, just maybe. First escape. Okay, so you can do that. Okay. Then yeah, you cannot. Choose. You have to do it like this, and then minimize this. No, I think that's enough. Maybe we can get to just see if this way to. No, no, you can't actually take that to the top. Uh, mm, that's fine. Don't worry. Uh, wait, what do you see now? Oh, there. Okay, that's fine. No, no, it's okay. Like it's that. fine. Just a little zoom out. I've got a little bit now. So, yeah, I think there we can see it better because it's a little bit so yeah. Well, it's difficult to see anyway. Yeah. yeah. But we will we will zoom in, in which ones we need. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Digital skills. So who is uh, digital skills? So am I doing this? Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we can oh, wrap yes, it up here now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
Let's put you on the Am I right? Okay, okay. It's okay. Uh, I will send my mouse. I will send this. Eh? Can, you can use my mouse if we need. Actually, I was thinking to to leave it like this. Maybe someone else wants to add things because we are all connected to this. And tomorrow I will have send to all and you can all see what's been written there and print it and uh, upload it to the file sharing so to have a, as an outcome of the train of trainers okay um can i go on with yes this? you uh, you have to go to so the same we're not yeah. discussing at all at the same time that's why i actually did the two parts i don't think we discuss at the same time those two parts Ah, okay, we, we can do the slideshow, right? Okay, we can do that <coughs> if you want, and we can wrap it things up here. Okay. All right. So value proposition. Value proposition. Am I? I don't know where I am. Value proposition. Which are the customers that we, the customer needs? We try to to satisfy. <coughs> so we have here a lot of digital skills of trainers. That's a need. Uh, we, trainers need e easy access and certifications and also a user-friendly platform. That's what we are trying to satisfy, the needs. The key partners are public and private schools, IT companies, private society. <coughs> I don't know. Private companies. Private companies. Private companies. Okay. And uh, key activities. Of course, we have software, we have hardware, internet. Do we have something else? Software, hardware, internet. Platform. Yes. Uh, probably it's other software, and hardware, and internet. And what else do we have? We have content. Eh? Okay, now key resources, uh, digital, digital tools, IT department, financial resources, HR department. HR department, probably because of the people who will be visiting the platform and they will take whatever is in there to distribute it to their organization. What about our organization? We have the IT department and what else? Because it's an e-learning platform. People get hired. Teachers. No? Yeah, but teachers. the HR department can give us ideas of what the people should know. Yeah, no, probably the IT department will uh, will focus on creating a, a very friendly platform. But we have content, so we need trainers, pedagogues. Uh, okay. And then... Uh, Okay, take it. Take this, take this. We just discuss this. Take this. Have you? Christina? Oh, it's Christina. I will use this. Okay. Today, our chief technician. Oh, but there's no more. Ah, Dale a esto. No, Customer results, customer results, advertising, effective learning results. And the channels, we have social media, dissemination, universities, schools, vet, and other training facilities. Very good. And customer segments, where do we, uh, why do we build, for whom do we build these? Professors, trainers, teachers, students, trainees, maybe some NGOs that they would like to, to use, to use it, to tra train their people. And uh, 
Cristina, la de las tareas, pues nos ayuda o nos da una foto de comer. Ok. And cost structure. Rent the service, ticket fee and sponsors. And return your revenue streams. Ok. Customer service, periodic sales promotions. Apply for funding, partnerships, students and age group discounts. What else? Maybe some EU project to promote and uh, update the platform. Okay. I would like to. Yeah. So I think this can be different. Yeah, EU. Yeah, can be EU. Can be also national. Yeah, exactly. Like we had uh, in Greece during the crisis that they had the boat, they rent the platform to do the courses online. Okay. Okay. But if there are any questions, it's the time to ask, or we can wrap it up for today. I don't really understand the section that says cost structure. I don't understand what is where are we going to get our uh, the money to to pro to to create the platform. I thought, I thought that was a revenue stream. That, that's why some of the answers should go to the revenues. To, to the, the revenues. Mm. Because here you have to put everything that uh, when you build a platform, what makes the cost? <coughs> what is the cost made of? Cost variety, sector, cost for uh, hardware, software, in order to have a price. Yeah, when, I, when I read, I thought it was the, uh -huh. the cost we would have, so it would be the salaries for the teachers and the IT department that would build the platform. Yes, that's one of the costs, but also hardware and the software, everything yeah. that costs the, the company. Everything so that what, the, what is that? Is the rental service? Yes. Yeah. 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 How? If you rent the service outdoors, somebody, then it's a cost. Yes. Yeah. Or staff cost. So this can be rent cost. or buy. The, a, the, answer is, the answer is a mixture. Sponsors, yes. sponsors are the revenue. Sponsors who will be it is, ones it is, the it is It is a mixture of, let's say, where the money are coming from in order to, to finance. It could be from sponsors. That's revenue. And also, and also <coughs> the money you should pay in order to deliver because it's a mixture, of course. Yeah, if you go by financial, financial support, 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 support,
yeah. what it was discussed in the project management as a tool, it has to be linked again as a tool to entrepreneurship, meaning that to direct to link the tool of project cycle management towards entrepreneurship capacity building, knowledge and skills. Uh, uh, by how? By using communication tools and also working in the thinking, by thinking. Why should you do like that? In order to remember that our final purpose is to give capacity to find the final trainees, such capacity in terms of knowledge and skills based on these four topics, offer them what they need in order to be trainers. You will be the trainers for future training. And finally, those, those people will, will be able to deliver training activities. On this year, entrepreneurship, communication, and training. Well, but it's fine. And also, uh, this is a tool which we can just get to trainers. Yeah. So on distance, people can work together. No. That's uh, important also to put in as a output. And then everybody will be happy. So it's uh, more creative. You said the happier we are, the more creative we are. Yeah. Better land. <laughs> yeah, Finland is the uh, most happy land in the, in the world. Finland? Finland. Finland. We are in Denmark, <laughs> then Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. So. But it was years ago. How happy they are! No, you don't. You don't miss that you have uh, so many problems that need to be. Yeah. So that's why you are really. But but also we learned that when we solve problems, new arise. Yes. So, yes. And we gave up. We just let them. So we create problems. That's why you are here. You need your problem. You're just acting like. <laughs> Here we agreed, I hope, yesterday that uh, now you have to buy all of Kobe. Yes, so yes, okay. Free. And tomorrow, uh, in front of uh, the hotel where Cabby stays, 9 30, we will be there with two. Uh, we'll have the cars with us. Okay. So, 9 o'clock. 9 30. Yes. It's the way it is. Wake up hotel. Yeah. The idea is that we, uh, as I told you, we go to Antinor and say hello to Hamlet, that was the same. And take the ferry to Sweden to NZ4. And uh, you will have some time and some exercises on uh, visiting Cornwall. Brain exercise. Because uh, to, we think that the workshop is very, uh, let's say, to do and to practice and Nobody. to see. So, for instance, how can we uh, change and make uh, living courses by visiting uh, Hamlet? Shakespeare was very inspired by Combo. Mm -hmm. He never been there. So, that's mm -hmm fantasy and creativity when he wrote and, and then we go down to Malmö and then back on the bridge. If you want to stay in Malmö, you can also do that and then take the train back to Pompeii for five minutes. That's for tomorrow and then we you saw the ticket. No, I asked. I asked. I asked. I asked. I asked. I I asked. 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 I I'm glad you're here. 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 I
So we made this also. We made this a two cheese. Okay. I thought we could have done it today. No, we should try it. Just to clarify everything on Thank you for this, Tanya. You would not take me home without it. Oh, okay. Because she was in the in the control when they came and they asked for it. She was looking. Okay. Said you have it, and we look at yeah, it. Yeah. It's the only one that you have signed because yeah. the Danish authority and they want this. Yeah. They are always. Uh...